Imagine embarking on a marathon, not one of miles, but of years. A 40-year journey that stretches across 90,000 hours of your life. That, my friend, is what many of us called our jobs. From the ages of 22 until our 60s, which is when many of us plan to retire, we are expected to run this marathon. We often begin the race with a purpose, fueled by a passion to achieve, to give, to grow. But as the years pass, each stride becomes a little harder, the landscape blurs, and you find yourself questioning, is this path truly mine? In today's video, we'll be going over the six models of career burnout and how you can reignite your passion in order to finish this race strong. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Christian. I'm an occupational therapist and I help people live independent and fulfilling lives. On this channel, we discuss real life lessons that can help you level up in the game of life. I'm very lucky to be working in a job that I enjoy right now, but this wasn't always the case because I remember a time where I was working a job where I was constantly feeling very tired and drained. I wasn't very motivated to go to my job and most of all, I was feeling that I wasn't really living my life to its full potential. I would simply get up in the morning, dread going to work. I remember kind of just sitting in my car, you know, right outside the hospital and just like, oh my goodness, I have to go into work. You know, this is going to be such a crappy day. And after day is done, I'll just be so tired. I didn't want to do anything else. I would just lay on the couch, play some video games, watch some television, and I would just repeat it like clockwork again and again and again. And looking back at the time, what I realized was that what I was experiencing was called burnout. Burnout is something that is extremely common, but it's not talked about enough. I mean, not just in the healthcare industry, but many other industries as well. You're constantly seeing people quitting their jobs, going on strikes, just being really, really unhappy with their work. And according to the World Health Organization, burnout is categorized into three different you know, characteristics. The first is feelings of just energy depletion and just constant exhaustion, where you're constantly feeling tired, not really feeling like you, know, you have the energy to do what you need to do in life. The second is feelings of increased mental distance from your job, like a negative connotation of it. You're not really feeling like you're motivated to go to work. You don't really like being there. And the third is a reduce in professional efficiency when you're working it means you're just not really right there when you're working you're not doing your best job you're just kind of on autopilot you're just clocking into work and you're just waiting to clock out now keep in mind all of us feel some of the three you know in our day-to-day -day jobs after all you know some jobs are pretty taxing pretty tiring but if there's a constant feeling of all three above then let me tell you that you are experiencing burnouts the reason I wanted to create this video is because I know many of us are experiencing burnout in our careers we're feeling very frustrated you know for many many different factors and what I want you to understand is why you're feeling that way, what you need to do in order to break out of the cycle, and how you can find a career that you're ultimately a lot more passionate about and help reignite things, you know, to make you feel motivated to go to work, to live your best life, and ultimately just be a lot happier in your day-to-day -day jobs. According to research, there are six factors that affect how you feel about your job. Workload, control, reward, community, fairness and values. Now, workload is essentially the amount of work that you have to do. What I want to be clear is that I'm not saying you shouldn't work hard at your job. What I'm saying is that if you're working too much at your job, if your employee is asking way too much of you, that is definitely a recipe for burnout. Many people would argue like, hey, you know, working hard, you know, don't be such a pansy. You know, you're supposed to work hard in your job. You know, you're, you're not supposed to be lazy and all that. But let me tell you that there's a huge difference between working hard for yourself versus working hard for someone else. Working hard for for someone else, there needs to be a balance. Business owners, entrepreneurs, they're gonna say like, you're supposed to work hard, you're supposed to hustle, and that is completely true. So you do want to work hard, but you want to work hard for your own goals, for what you want to achieve. You don't necessarily want to work hard for someone else. That is how burnout starts to happen. So what you want to make sure is that whatever job you're working, there's a right balance between the workload they're giving you, that it actually makes sense. And a good employee will understand this, that they will have you work hard, but they'll make sure that they're balancing it so that everything makes sense. Number two, is control and as human beings all of us want control of our lives and the problem with a job is that you have to live life by someone else's rule now there has to be a balance here because a great employer would understand that they can't micromanage someone too much they can't really restrict someone's opinion to restrict how someone does things they have to give freedom to someone to express how they want to do things to give freedom to someone to express their opinions about things so if a job is constantly restricting how you do things there then that can be a recipe for burnout and as an occupational therapist I understand understand the power of independence if your job is not allowing you to be essentially independent in your job even though you're following the rules going by the schedules then that there might be a sign that that job isn't really one that is right for you number three is reward now all of us work because we obviously want to make money but more than just money we also want recognition we want achievements we essentially want to feel that whatever time and work we're putting into our job we're getting something in return and the tricky thing is this is that we live in an era right now where there's a lot of inflation a 
lot of debt and everybody, everybody feels that they're not making enough money in their jobs. And this is where things start to get a little tricky because employees on the other hand aren't able to give you enough money because obviously their business are pretty strapped tight because of the economy. But you at the same time are feeling you're working your butt off but you're not getting paid enough. So the problem here is this, is that if you're feeling that you're working way harder, way, way harder and you're not getting enough in return, then it's time to think of a solution. You cannot simply wait for your employer to give you a raise. You cannot wait to be recognized because that's not going to happen. And the reason for that is because your employer is probably too worried about their own top line, too worried about you know making their own profits, they have their own problems to deal with. So you need to figure out how you can solve the issue of getting more for what you're putting in. Number four is the community. Now, we spend a lot of time with the people we're working with because obviously we're going to be working our jobs for a long time. You want to make sure that the people you're spending time with are people that you actually want to spend time with. Now, the big change between my last job and this job is really the people that I work with because the people that I work with, they're very easygoing. They really support each other with pursuing common goals. And this makes it very exciting to work, right? Because if I ever need support, someone's there for me. Even my boss, you know, my boss is very supportive of my ideas and all that. So the community and you need to mesh well. And if you don't, let me tell you that it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult to go to work, even though you get paid a lot, even though it's a job that you, you know, you like what you're doing on your day-to-day -day tasks. If the community surrounding you is not appropriate, then you're going to get burnt out very, very quickly. Number five is fairness. And the reason for this is because human psychology, we're constantly comparing ourselves with each other. So if we see a coworker, you know, Miss Susie, who is, you know, working a lot less than us, you know, she's not really doing a lot, she's slacking off. But at the same time, she's getting these big promotions, these big raises. Maybe she's, you know, she's sucking up to the boss or whatever. This can make us feel extremely, extremely bitter. And I've seen this firsthand where someone works extremely hard, but they're not really appreciated. Well, someone who doesn't really work as hard, but does the right things are appreciated. This can cause an imbalance because we don't feel things are fair. It makes us feel very bitter. There's lower job satisfaction. So we want to make sure that the workplace, the boss, especially whoever is hiring us is aware that everyone should be treated fairly. Everything is equal. And this can help reduce burnout in the workplace. And number six is values. Now, ultimately, wherever we're working, we want to make sure that our values aligns with the place that we're working with. If we're someone that really treasures, you know, honesty, treasures, you know, hard work and all that, but we're working for a company that likes to lie a lot, you know, likes to slack off, then there's definitely going to be some clashes right there. And that's why whenever you start working for a job, you want to be aware, like, what exactly, why are you working this job? What are you passionate about? What are your values that? And if the company that you're working for don't share the same values, then it is very, very obvious that that's not the right place for you. Now, if you're enjoying this video up to this point, I really appreciate it if you smash the like button. It lets me know whether this kind of content is something that you guys want to learn about or if I should kind of pivot a little bit. So go ahead, smash the like button if you like it or better yet, leave a comment below on what you actually did like. And uh, yeah, back to the video. If you're watching this video up to this point, you probably somewhat resonated with some of the points that I shared. You are likely feeling burnt out at your job and you're seeking a way out. And I'm here to tell you that the unfortunate truth is that you probably have to start seeking a better job. And the reason for this is because you're not going to actually change how your employer is going to treat you. You're not going to change your work environment. And most of all, you're not going to change how much you're going to get paid at your job. The only thing that you can control and the only variable that you have any control over is things related to yourself, your own personal development. So I'm going to share three things that you can start doing now to prep yourself for a better career. The first thing you got to do is make sure you identify what exactly are you passionate about your job? What are you going to be good at? What do you like doing about your job because sure there's a lot of sucky things that's happening that's most likely why you're trying to leave your job but you want to identify why you started in the first place for me personally i really enjoy the patient interactions that i have how i communicate with patients so what i did was i really honed in on that i really got good at communicating with patients and that helped me in my next job right because ultimately you want to develop some sort of skill some sort of value that way you can seek a better paying job so what you want to do right now is you want to identify what part of your job that you're passionate about that you can get really really good at and really focus on getting extremely good at it. Seek different resources, seek it up online, practice it on your day-to-day -day job. Just simply focus on it. That way you can become the best at it. And that way, once you start applying for your next job, you can be like, hey, I practiced this skill a lot in my last job. I got really, really good at it. And this is why I'm valuable to you. And the reason you do this is because when you apply for your next job, if you just simply applied for it saying like, oh, I didn't really like my last job, you know, they were this and this and this and it's all negative. No other job is going to want to actually take you. But if you went to the other job, 
job and you're like, oh, I really honed in on this job. This is what I'm really, really good at. Now, the other employer is going to be able to see the value in you. This makes you a lot higher quality of a candidate to actually be hired. Step two is to set up a plan. Now, the problem that many people run to, even though you know they dislike their job or whatnot, is they end up staying at that job for an extended period of time, even though they hate it. What a terrible way to live, right? I mean, if you don't like it, what you need to do is you need to set up a plan. A lot of people set up like, oh, I'm just gonna work this job for an extra year so I can save up and do these kind of things. No, you need to set a much shorter time frame to how you're going to transition into your next job. So for example, if you're working a job that you're not really passionate about, you're kind of thinking about switching jobs over here, then you need to start coming up with a plan. You'd be like, all right, I'm gonna give myself three months, three months to master the skills. Remember step one, you need to learn about a skill, get really, really good at it. Once that time period is done, what is the plan? Are you going to start applying for jobs? Are you going to update your resume? Are you going to start networking and communicating and trying to find other opportunities? You need to have a set plan and shorten the time span. Don't stretch it out too long because what happens then is people get way too comfortable and then you just stay there for a long period of time and what you don't realize is that five, 10 years went by and you're still working a job that you didn't really even like in the first place. You need to start taking action and you take action by setting a plan and shortening the goal so it's actually achievable. And step number three is to set aside time after your work day for personal development. Now, I know you might be saying to yourself like, oh, personal development, that's you know, something that I don't really care about. But this is extremely important because ultimately your job is a very, very small bubble, right? It's teaching you very, very strict criteria and it's very pertaining to only that specific career. But ultimately life is a huge bubble. There are a lot of things in life, like even right now, right? As I'm speaking to the camera, I'm learning about social media, learning about how to, you know, camera confidence and all the different things. There are a lot of different skills that can be compounded with your job skills that can create greater opportunities for yourself. But unless you put aside time besides your job to develop these skills, you will always be stuck at this one small little level. And the problem that I encountered is that after my job, you know, when I was really burnt out and tired is that I would come home and that's when my day would end, right? I wouldn't really want to do anything else. I was really so drained and tired, but you have to force yourself even a little bit, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, put aside time to, you know, practice a new skill, learn something new, something that you can develop in order to help you seek a better paying job. There's really countless things you can learn about. I don't want to be too specific about things. Try to really critically think, you know, what are skills? What are things you can learn about or know about that can help you find a better paying job or a job that you're going to enjoy a lot more. That's about it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button. And if you want more content like this, go ahead and check out this next video over here where I shared the five secrets for a passionate career. So thank you again. And until the very next one, take care. Peace.